Hey, my name is Thomas and I'm on a mission. I'm looking for, I've got gear acquisition syndrome again, and but I'm looking for a camera that really brings me something new, something special, a real advantage. So I give this a try. It's a Rollei Cord 6x6 Twin Lens Reflex made in the 1950s in Germany, in Braunschweig. So I shot this for maybe a month and now I want to talk a little bit about it and share the experience with you. Let's have a go. So a uh, Rollei cord, that's the cheap version of a Rollei Flex and the Rollei Flex, uh, they, both these cameras come from Franke and Heidecke, a company in Braunschweig in Germany. They sort of uh, perfectionized the 6x6 twin lens reflex concept in around 1929, I think the first Rollei Flexes were made. And in 1938, they changed the body style a little bit. And from then on, that sort of body style remained into production until 2014. Uh, so a really, really long production time. And the cheaper version, the Rollei Cord, it was made, uh, started also in the 1930s and made until 1976. So there are seven different models called 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the 5A and the 5B. This is a Rollei Cord 5A, so it's the last but one model. Um, it was pretty modern in the 1950s. Uh, all the problems that these cameras maybe had in terms of handling or stuff were sorted out at the time. It's a really easy camera to shoot and I'm going to show you why. Forty meters, 125th of a second, f4. ISO 100, I've got the Kodak T-Max 100 in it. And that was it. So when I said that old uh, roller cords would be problematic, I don't mean they have any problems in terms of how they work. It's more like there are some issues when you operate them. Basically, you can say there are like three generations of roller cords. There is the pre-war models that have a basic uh, three lens element uh, design and uh, also some other amenities are missing there. Then there is the early post-war version Rollei Cord 3 that's already got a Zeiss Tessar lens, four lens elements. And then there is the Rollei Cord 4 and 5 models and they add a very important feature and that is that uh, when you uh, don't wind on the film, you can't cock the shutter, so there is no risk to do a double exposure. And I think that's a huge comfort feature that you really want to have. So personally, I would always recommend to get a Rollei Cut 4 or a 5 model. Note these nice light baffles inside the camera for increased contrast of your images. All Rollei Cord 4 and 5 models have this feature. First thing is so easy. Uh, the later model, the 5B, cannot do that because they uh, the 5B has an uh, removable uh, hood and then they had to drop this beautiful simple design. I'm a huge fan. Uh, push out the loop. Push out down this and then you can peek from here through there. If you don't want to use it from waist level. Uh, do this, this, close. Fantastic. Uh, this is to wind on the film. And as I said, uh, starting with the Rolla Cut 4, they have uh, a prevention for double exposure. That's a small lever here. You can 
pull that lever if you want to do double exposure. There are many Rolleiflex flex models that can't do that. Uh, no double exposure is possible even if you want to. So this is an advantage. Um, here you have to push that and turn to adjust your aperture. And here there's small windows so you can see your value in these small windows and you can here adjust your shutter speed. Remember these two are interlocked. The idea was you would use an external light meter, get an exposure value, uh, set the value once and then you could run through all the different uh, you know, combinations of shutter speed and exposure time with one lever. Uh, today most people find that a hassle, me too, so if you only want to adjust the shutter time not change the aperture, you press this again and then you can move this lever. Okay, uh, here is a flash sync, uh, here goes your uh, cable release. There's also a small attachment for this if you want to use this as a shutter button from below. That small attachment, I always show you a picture, I've got it at home. Uh, super expensive today, like 50, 60 euros, because they often got lost. Uh, normally you trigger the shutter here, you go like this. I don't do it now because there's film in it and you wind the shutter, pulling the lever to there. Um, here we've got the uh, focusing. It's beautiful, completely, it works. It's a fantastic mechanism, has a very, very solid feel to it, very smooth. It focuses down to 0.9 meters. That's of course with all the twin lens reflexes the problem. Uh, you can't really focus very closely. There is an attachment for that to focus more close. Uh, these two guys you will need when you insert film. Um, here, if you, I do it very carefully now. If you do go like this and then you can pull this lever, you can open the camera to remove the film. Now it's locked. And here you've got your film counter, 12 pictures on a roll of 6x6. There are also attachments available for 6x4.5 and even for 35mm film, but today I think they're pretty not interesting. Here you've got an old table that ho helps you with your exposure, because the camera doesn't have an exposure meter. And here you've got the Zeiss Tessar lens f3.5, 75 millimeters. It equals about a 40 millimeter in uh, 35 mil film. So it's a sort of a wide standard lens. Uh, and with f3.5 on a 6x6 frame, you also get a pretty low depth of field. I've got a black or white film. It doesn't make sense, this photo. <laughs> so I'm not going to take it. <laughs> So we're here in the beautiful uh, city of Düsseldorf and as you saw I brought perfect weather with me for the shooting and also these uh, fun attractions like huge Lego bricks with uh, rainbow colors on them. You never know what the point of that is. Um, however, I shot this camera already. As I said, the last month I shot a couple of rolls, uh, especially night shots, so I will throw them in into this video as well. So at least we got nice sample photos despite the bad weather. A word about the lenses and the image quality. Uh, the Zeiss Cesar is a very good lens for lens element design and there are also many 
Fräulein Flex models, the older ones, that also come with a size to saw lens, the last being the so-called Roller Flex T. That was also made until 1976. So whatever camera you buy, either a Roller Cord or such an older Roller Flex, if you've got a size to saw lens, you will get a beautiful 1950s style of quality. And if you stop it down to eight or 11, uh, you also get really crisp and sharp uh, detailed images that almost look like uh, yeah like modern day uh, quality so that's a very good thing it combines the old look with a modern quality The weather this winter here in Germany is really not nice. It's dull and gray all the time. So whenever there's an opportunity, like now we just had like half an hour of sunshine. I was uh, rushing around with the camera, took a picture. Um, note all these nice original filters and attachments that uh, Rollei uh, was delivering for Roller Flex and Roller Cord models. This is the so-called Bionet 1. This is the smallest size and then other models have Bionet 2 or 3. So the filters have like a Bionet mount fantastic love it and that brings me to the verdict uh, i really love this camera it ticks so many boxes for me um, i was looking for something that brings my photography a little bit forward in terms of i wanted a versatile camera a affordable camera a camera that's easy to carry around small and compact and with the biggest image quality so um, six by six this camera just beats any 35 millimeter camera you can do I don't know, even a Leica won't do this in terms of detail and tonality. Um, it's affordable. I paid 150 euros. Uh, yes, the camera needs a, the shutter needs a CLA job. That's maybe another 150, but still, you know, 300 euros for such a beautiful camera. I don't find it's too much. Uh, it's light white, about 900 grams. Almost nothing. You don't feel it in your bag. Uh, it's not as small as a folding camera if you want to go even smaller. Check out my Folklander Pakeo uh, 2 review. Maybe the smallest way to go, quality 6x6. But the TLR is for me much more enjoyable to shoot. I love the big reflex uh, finder. I love that it's so small and quiet also because it has, you know, twin lens reflex has a fixed mirror, no mirror slap. Uh, love the lens quality of the Tessar. Um, it's just a super well thought out camera. I love also the fit and finish of this thing. I think it's better fit and finish than Yashica or Minolta Autocord, which are also awesome cameras. But yeah, last not least, it's a legend. It's the baby version of a Rollei Flex, but it is for me a real legend. If I think of legendary cameras, I think Leica, Hasselblad and Rollei Flex, and this is the baby version of Rollei Flex. I can't complain. I'm really, really happy with this camera. Uh, the two downsides, number one, close focusing, 0.9 meters, hmm, not so nice. Um, all twin lens reflex cameras have this problem, save the Mamiya C uh, series. Um, but the Mamiya is a very big and heavy camera. I also uh, have one and I reviewed it. Um, the video link is there. Beautiful camera, the Mamiya, also with interchangeable lenses, but very, very heavy. And, um, and this is lightweight, transportable and beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy with this camera, I can't believe it. Uh, so I can only recommend it to everyone.
So that's it for today. Uh, regards from Bad Ems, beautiful small town in the center of Germany, not far away from uh, Koblenz at the Rhein. Uh, really worth a visit if you're into beautiful scenery landscape or want to enjoy a spa, hotel, something like that. Uh, check out Bad Ems. <laughs> Um, hope you enjoyed this video, found it interesting, maybe even useful. If you've got any questions or comments, if you're in the market for a Rolai Cord or Rolai Flex camera, want to know something, just drop a comment in the comment section below. I love to read all your comments and I will happily answer every single one of them. Also, maybe I just said it, leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. Uh, many thanks, by the way, for 2,000 subscribers. I I'm so thankful for all your support. It makes it so much fun to do all these videos uh, and have such a nice audience. I uh, couldn't wish for anything better. Many, many thanks. And yeah, hope you have a good time. Uh, live long and prosper. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.